Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a full step-by-step -step guide, just showing you how to replace the front brake discs and pads on this 2016 Ford Ranger. And this one's a 3.2 Wild Track. Just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. We've got quite a few other videos on there you might want to check out. We've got another video on the same truck replacing the aircon pump. And there's also going to be a video to follow up just carrying out an engine service as well. Now you can just see we're using a two poster ramp to do the job. It does make it a little bit easier, but they're not too bad. They're quite easy to do on the floor without a ramp. All I do is just jack them up quite high on the front on each side just to give you a decent bit of access around the wheel. That's all. Um, but we've got a new set of front brake discs and pads, and I'll just put links in the description below to the, all the parts that we used. I'll put links to where you can get them from, and I'll put links to all the tools and all the torque settings as well. Just before we get it up in the air, first thing we're going to do is just take off the cap of the brake fluid reservoir. It's just once we've got it all stripped down and we push the pistons back, it'll just rise the level in the reservoir and this will just stop any pressure in there building up. So we'll just sit that aside for now, get it up in the air and just run you for a step at a time. And just to get the wheel off, just going to need 19mm socket and we've just got the locking wheel nut tool for the one locking nut there. Right, so now that we've got the wheel off, just show you the reason that we're replacing the front brakes on this one tonight. It's just that there's quite a big lip on the front brake disc. And you can just see the pads there, I've got a little bit left on them. The inside one looks a little bit lower than the outside one. Um, but because there's such a big lip on the disc, it's actually starting to make quite a bit of a noise. So, um, But at this stage now, the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to use a flat bladed screwdriver. Just to just lightly pry the caliper this way, just so it's not quite so tight and we'll be able to get it over the lip of the disc quite easily. Um, but once we've just lightly pried it that way, we're just going to undo the two slider bolts. You're going to want a 15mm socket to get them off. And sometimes they'll just come straight off, but you might find you need to either put a spanner or a set of grips just on these two middle bits there. You can just see it's got a slotted size to it. So we'll just do that quick now and run you on to the next step. Right, so it actually has got a 15 mil bolt in the bottom, 13 mil bolt in the top. And you can just see on the top one, you just have to use a spanner just to uh, grip the inside bit of the slider there. The next thing we're going to do is going to pull the slider off, the caliper off now. But you don't want to hang the caliper on the flexios. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off now. I'm just going to use a big pair of grips, just like that, with the pads in there. Because it's a twin piston, if you push one side back, the other side will come back out. So if you, if you do it with the pads in, it'll push them both back together. So I'm just going to pull it off now, I'll use the grips to push it back, push both pistons right back and then I'll hook the caliper up to see if we can hook it up on top of the arm and if we can't we'll just use a couple of cable ties just to strap it up out of the way just so that the weight's not hanging on the brake flexi there. So just do that now. Right, so now I've got the brake pads out, and just see, I've just sat the caliper up, you can just rest it on top of the arm. If you're a little bit unsure and worried it's going to fall off, just put something on it just to strap it up there so it can't drop down. It's just you can, if you're not careful, you can damage the flexios there. So, um, But you can just see, on the pads there, you've got these little spring clips on there, and they can be a little bit tight to get out. There's a little tab there that just sort of locks the pad in a little bit. So sometimes you just have to just pry it past that, or just push that in, just to get the pad out past it, that's all. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, just going to need an 18mm socket. Got two bolts to get the carrier off, just one at the bottom there and one at the top. So we're just going to undo both of them, remove the carrier, get that out of the way. Alright, so we've now got the carrier off. Once you've got the carrier off, the next thing you want to do is just check that the sliders are nice and free. You can just feel that's nicely greased up and moving nicely. Now, if they're not, if that's tight, the boot, they'll need pulling out the boots, freeing off and greasing up just to get them working nicely again. Um, but we're going to get that over to a bench in a minute. 
and we'll just take the shims out give it all a really good clean up both sides of it and then pop the shims back into place um, we'll just get the brake disc off now now this model hasn't got disc screws on it you might find with some that have actually got disc screws through these holes which will obviously need removing before you get the disc off it should just pull off sometimes it can be a little bit tight if it is a bit tight you might just use a hammer just to sort of knock it a little bit just to get it off you don't always want to be knocking obviously for replacing the discs it's not so bad it's good practice just to free them off sometimes if you just hit it on the face of the disc it'll just crack it off because they just tend to get just rusted on behind the face of it there so if you knock it a few times around their face you should find it'll crack it off enough to pull it off so with the disc off now just before um, cleaning the carrier up just going to give this all a bit of a clean up there's various various different tools you can use to clean this up You're probably just going to use a bit of emery cloth to do it um, but yeah just give just clean the thicker the rust off that's all you don't have to go too mad on it but as long as you can get any of the thick bits off the worst of it off it'll be nice and ready to rebuild with the new disc Yeah, so we've got the carrier all cleaned up now i took the shims off obviously cleaned up well behind them then put the shims in then cleaned the shims as well these shims are a little bit tricky to clean because they've got a few like pegs and bits in the way where you can't get in very well uh, but now that i've done that next thing i'm going to do is use some ceramic paste rather than copper grease you don't really want to be using copper grease on your modern brakes with abs i'm um, just going to put that just on any of the surface where the brake pad is going to run and it's just doing it this way now while the carrier's off you can get it nicely on the back one and it saves it being a bit awkward when the disc's on sometimes when you're trying to put it on with the disc's on you can end up going through and putting it on the brake disc you don't really want it on the brake disc so we'll just get some of that on there now get it ready and we'll get the disc swapped over Right, so now that the carrier's all ready, just going to give the brake disc a wipe down. It's just to come with a little bit of a coating on there. Just want to use a bit of brake cleaner just to clean that off, that's all. And just before I put the disc on, I will just put a little coating of grease. You don't really want too much on the back of it, but I do just like to just, not quite so bad on these, but just put, like to put a little bit of a thin coating just on the inside edge. Just good practice, really. Some wheels tend to get stuck on the actual centre piece there, but... Um, this style of wheel is not actually too bad, so. Right, so I've got the disc screw on now. Obviously, it's slightly loose without the carrier on there. The next thing I'm going to do is put the carrier back on. And the torque setting for the carrier is 115 newton meters. So we've just started the two carrier bolts just by hand. Just wound them in lightly with a buzz gun. And now we're going to nip them up. 215 newton meters. Right, so this stage now we're ready to fit the brake pads. Now the brake pads have already got like an anti-squeal pad on them so you don't need to cover the back in grease but I am just going to put another bit of ceramic paste just on the mating surfaces there that touch with the carrier there so also I'm just going to put them on now and the pads also have a little wear indicator like an anti-squeal indicator. The, in the squeal indicator always goes on the inside brake pad. So just pop them in there. Right, so they're all nicely situated now because of the way that this style pads fit in they're a little bit tight and with that little um, like locking tab on the back there you just can see it just give it a little tap just to send it past the tab but just make sure you that they don't want to be tight once they're in and past the tab they're all nice and free you can just see you can slide that in and out of there nicely because there's like a little spring clip on it as well so that's both of them moving nicely in there and this stage now just going to put the carrier back over it then we'll knit the caliper bolts on and the torque setting for them is 55 newton meters. Now 
It's actually 52 newton meters. Right, so that's got the brake distance pads on for one side. All I'm going to do now is just speed through doing the other side. Uh, but obviously it's exactly the same procedure as this side. As you can see, it's quite a straightforward replacement. Obviously, if you're doing yours, pretty much up to now, I'll show you the main replacement. Um, but I'll just run through it quickly now. If you're not watching the video to the end, we're just going through the other side and just checking the level and stuff at the end. One real crucial thing you do need to make sure you do is when you've done your brakes, before you do anything and get the car off the ramp, just make sure you get in the car and just pump the brake pedal out. It's just at the minute, the pistons are still right back. So there'll be a bit of movement on the carrier, on the caliper. And the first press of the pedal will probably go right down to the floor there. So you do want to start driving off, press the pedal, press the pedal and you'll have no brakes for the first bit. That's all just until it's pumped the pistons out. So, um, but we'll just get onto the other side now quick. Just put the wheel on this side. Uh, and then once we've done that at the end, we'll just talk all the wheels up and everything as well. We'll run you through the torque setting for that. But yeah, we'll just speed through this next bit quick. Thing. One thing I didn't say on the other side, you just want to check the condition of your piston seals as well. The other side was okay, but you can see this side's actually got a little bit of a split in it, which obviously as soon as we've got a split in it, we can get water in and it'll start rusting on your caliper piston and it's likely to seize up. I mean, that one is nice and free at the minute, um, but really that is going to be a bit of a problem, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. We might have to see about either getting that repaired or just a new caliper on that at some point. Right, so now I've dropped it back down, just going to torque the front wheels up and the, width, the torque setting is 135 newton meters. Right, so I've now torqued the front wheels up. I just went inside the cab quickly and just pumped the brake pedal out. Just pumped it a few times. The first few times it went right down. And just pump it till it goes rock hard. Then you know that your uh, pads are pushed right out. And once you've done that, just check, check your brake fluid level. And just see at the minute, this one's right at the top. It's nearly, it's actually right on the top of the max. If it was above it slightly, it would as you just take a little bit out. Um, but it is just right on the max now. So that's absolutely spot on. And just put the reservoir cap back on. And now that that's done, just in case of dropping it off the ramp, just taking it for a run, just making sure it feels all right. Make sure when you brake, it's not pulling to one side or anything like that. Make sure it sounds okay. But yeah, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to check out any of the parts or tools used, just check the links in the description below. And don't forget to check out the channel. There might be a few other videos on there that you fancy taking a look at as well. But yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.